Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is Saturday. It is the 2022 version of March the, oh, I'm gonna say 11th, but I'm not sure. Welcome to the Spurs Talk Show. You're with me, Sean Butler. How's everybody doing? It's game day! That's right. Only six more hours until biggest game of the season. Tottenham away at Old Trafford. Or a six-pointer before the other six-pointers as we try and figure out the path to top four. It's not a hell of a lot of news out today, so I'm going to keep this fairly brief. Just wanted to come on and hopefully this will be live before I go live on the Irish Hotspur, which I think is happening at 2pm. So if you're watching this before then, then make sure you head on over to the Irish Hotspur, put the pre-match pump up, for game day! And then also the watch along at 5.30 with Dave and myself, no Jack today, because he's over here actually, he's in Manchester I think, but not for the game, I think he's just um, exploring uh, the UK with his girlfriend, wife, I'm not sure of his marital status. A um, little bit of news out this morning, not too much, but obviously a confirmation that uh, Sessignon's injury, I think it looks like he's going to be out for another couple of months, guys. I mean, how does that make you feel? <sighs> Sucks to be him, right? So much talent, so much potential, so much time on his side. I've had so much time already stolen from a recurring injury that just won't go away. He plays four games, five games, and it bang, it goes again. And he's out for a couple of months. Comes back, takes a little while to get back into his stride, then starts to find his feet, produces some moments of magic, gets a couple of assists early in games. You know, that's the one thing about his performances that I always find remarkable is that his, his assist that he gets usually come inside the first 10 minutes so he's like he's awake he's on he's on point on form from the get-go which isn't something that Tottenham can usually say about themselves so he's gonna be a sore sorely missed the only upside is that I think left wing back is the only spot in our squad where you could argue that we have equity in the two players that play there, Regulon and Sessegnon. Um, so we've got someone to come back in who's arguably not going to weaken the team. If, if anything, you might argue that he's going to strengthen it because a lot of people would say he's your preferred left wing back of choice. But I'll tell you what, he's only just recovering from an injury or COVID or whatever was wrong with him. So, you know, if he goes down as well, then that's it, isn't it? Who do you play then instead? Do you put Bergwijn into left wing back? I mean, that's, that's a system that's been used once, I think against Middlesbrough, when we were one nil down and didn't do anything. Um, so, just gotta wait here. There's some farmers moving their horses. I don't know if you can see it in the background. Um, but uh, yeah, so we're on thin ice now with the left wing back spot. I don't know who would go in. I'm guessing you'd put Davies out there if, if Regulon got injured. And then you either go to a back four going forward, which would disrupt our entire formation just when it's starting to look settled as a 3-4-3. A three, three. Or you'd stick with the 3-4-3 three, the three, three, and you put Davies out there maybe Oh, I don't know about that. He's not a left wing back, is he? Um, and then you'd have to bring in Sanchez or Roden. Well, no, because Sanchez can't play left wing, left, cent left side of centre back. He's Bambi on ice when that happens. So you bring back in Roden. He hasn't been played. He hasn't kicked the ball. <laughs> exposes the thread, the threadbare squad that we have. We all know it. Anyway, let's hope that doesn't happen today. 
Let's hope the Regalon gets through the 90 minutes unscathed. Let's hope that we take away the three points. And uh, I wonder, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments, right? I've asked this question a couple of times on a couple of, uh, couple of shows and got very mixed, mixed responses. I'd love to know, would you rather take three points today but lose a first 11 player to an injury? And I'm not going to specify which player because you know, they're all equally uh, important, I guess, for their own reasons. And lose that, lose that player to injury for like a few weeks. Or would you rather get a draw or uh, a loss, but then stay injury free for the rest of the season? Like how important is the three points today um, in the quest for top four? To the point, is it that important to the point that if we don't get three points and top four's over anyway, so an injury uh, after this wouldn't really matter too much for the top four uh, scenario? I know some of you are probably gonna say we're not even worried about top four, top six is the aim, and that's okay too. I don't know, just, I like to posit these would you rather questions, because um, normally the answer is I wouldn't want either of them, but that's why we do them. Hypothesize, and hopefully remove that from a, ma a manifestation into reality. So it won't happen, neither will happen. Let me move swiftly forward to the rest of the game. 3-4-3 three, three is the likely formation. Regalon on the left. Back three, as you know, Romero, Dyer, Davies. Right wing back's the only other place up for contention this afternoon, this evening. Don't think there's a justification for putting Emerson Royale in, really, because I think that Matt Doherty is a confidence player and his confidence is sky high, and so it should be as he's playing out of this world. Um, but you could argue that Manchester United are going to be strongest down their left, whether Sancho plays out there, whether Ronaldo sits out there. I don't think Ronaldo will sit out there very much, but you can you can imagine and you can envisage a lot of them, a lot of the. The direction of play being down Manchester United's left hand side and I do worry a little bit about Doherty uh, I don't think he's necessarily got the swiftness of feet to be able to be pulled and jinked inside and out by some of those pacey uh, Manchester United wide players so I do worry about that and I, you could argue that Emerson Royale probably could could do a job there. You know, the last time we needed to really shut down um, a player was against Manchester City, and Emerson started that game and did did well. Uh, did very well. You know, kept their left side, kept Gerdigan quite quiet. I'm trying to think who was on the left hand side that day for them. Was it Sterling? No. I can't remember who it was, but whoever it was, that's how anonymous they were because Emerson did a job. And I just wonder whether or not Emerson would be better than Doherty for today, for the purposes of today. But then when you consider Emerson's confidence is low, Doherty's is sky high, what Doherty can offer going forward and the relationship that he's built, this synergy that is going on on the right hand side of our pitch right now with with uh, Kulosevsky. I think you've got to keep, the, keep Doherty in. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments. What is that? Nine and a half minutes? That's about enough, isn't it? Just a quick prediction for the game, guys. I reckon 3-1 Tottenham. I think it will be tight to start with. But we need to shut down United in the first 20 minutes. Their crowd will be so impatient for some sort of kick back some sort of uh, revenge dressing down from the humiliating respect uh, uh, the humiliating defeat against Manchester City but they also might have one eye on the on the uh, Champions League game that they've got on Tuesday because that's in the balance so 
is quite a uh, quite an interesting setup. I don't know whether it's going to be two teams that sit back off each other and do the low block and a game of chess that ends up being fairly boring and it will be a nil-nil or someone snatches it late, like a one-nil snatch and grab in the 88th minute or something. Or it could go the other side, which is the side I'm hoping for, which is where you know you have five plus six, six plus goals, you know, three all, four three, four two, something like that. Because you look at the two teams and you see that Sonny could have a field day. Sonny could have an absolute field day against the the uh, the, the lack of pace in the United back line. But you know, Ronaldo could come back and he always does well against Tottenham. Always does well against Tottenham. So, and Cavani's fit and he's danger man, isn't he? He's, he's got, he needs just a split second to, to, to cause carnage. So, the last thing I also want to say is that I don't want Romero to have a cool head today. As much as I love him smashing into players, as much as I absolutely love the guy, he is a pain merchant. He loves dealing in pain, whether he's doing it to himself by hanging onto the ball a second too long because he can fit, he loves getting crunched by somebody or whether he's dishing it out. I feel like he could be a pivotal part of the game and not necessarily because of his defending. I think it could be because of his tackling, uh, or sorry, not his, his, like his positive defending. I'm just worried that he might you know, be targeted by certain players because he's liable to go in a bit too rough and uh, he could be a, a double yellow card waiting to happen. I need him to calm down. Anyway, that's it from me. 12 minutes is longer than I was hoping it would be. Come on you Spurs. 3-1. And uh, I'll see you on the Irish Hotspur. Come on!